Update. I've only just realized that I let the men I call my family and friends ruin my marriage. Original post. I've been divorced for almost two years, and a few weeks ago, my father, 67 male, my brothers, 37 male and 40 male, and four friends, 35 male, 37 male, 38 and 41 male, while very drunk, joked about how they can't believe I left my wife. They said that they all tried to get with her since the divorce, but she had repeatedly rejected them, saying it would be inappropriate and unkind to do such a thing to me. I laughed at what they were saying, just to ease them into saying more. And once they thought I found it funny, they really opened up. They had all purposely made me feel paranoid about my ex-wife cheating on me and using me. Because why would a woman like her be with a man like me? If it wasn't for the money I made? They often hinted at, or sometimes even directly said, that she wore the pants in the relationship. And that she was only with me because I'm easily manipulated. They constantly planted negative things into my mind. If I wanted to talk with them about something happening in my relationship, they would put a negative twist to it, or they'd purposely give me bad advice. Then, when I lost my job during COVID, they all hinted at how she's definitely cheating, now that there's no financial benefit in being faithful to me. I obviously trusted them and often took their words to heart, and it ruined my marriage. I frequently argued with my wife, and I was always accusing her of something or suspecting her of not really loving me. I questioned everything that was between us, I often told her BS things, like how I'm a high-value man and that she needed to appreciate me. And when I was not working for six months, I flipped the script and started accusing her of not respecting me for not working. I was an appreciative of all her hard work and for being the one who took care of our household bills and any other bill during those six months of unemployment. I continued to let their words drive me into paranoia and I started accusing her of cheating with her co-workers. Eventually, my wife had enough of my moods, constant mistrust, and accusations. She left me. And to be honest, for a long time it felt like it came out of nowhere. And so I had myself convinced she left me for another man. Now, here I am knowing that every man I've called my family, my friend, were all my enemies who I let destroy my marriage. I obviously lost my mind once they were done telling me all the ways they conspired to ruin my marriage. And we did get to blows. Then cut off all contact with each and every one of them. I want to reach out to my ex and make amends and hopefully get her back. My ex-wife has agreed to meet up with me, and she doesn't know exactly what I want to discuss with her and I don't know how to go about making amends and hopefully mending our relationship. How do I tell her how much I regret everything and that I want her to give me a second chance? Is there even a chance for us? Edit. Some of y'all keep saying you took the words of your friends over your wife's, and I don't think that's a fair or complete assessment. I trusted my father and brothers, my father was the main driving force behind this manipulation campaign. And it's not often that your entire family is conspiring against you. And not only your family, but also your friends. I'm not running away from accepting the fact that it is wholly my fault in how my marriage ended. I take ownership of that. I take ownership of the fact that I accused my wife of being a cheater or a user. I regret it all. If my ex-wife doesn't accept my apology, I would accept it gracefully. If she said she never wanted to talk to me or ever get back together, I'd also accept it. I would not stand it away, and I would not try to change her mind. I would wish her well and leave her be. Now, for the top advice before reading the update. So, are you telling me that your dad and brothers also tried to get with your wife? I'm shocked they are still alive after a confession like that. I don't know, man. Bahamians are just too volatile to hear something like that to not go off. That's just vile. I didn't include the violence that broke out once heard at all, because I didn't want to get my post banned. Blood was absolutely spilled. And of course I had myself beat because it was 7 against 1. But I did do damage, and an ambulance and the police were called. None of us pressed charges against each other and left it at that. Honestly, I'm still raging, and I've been heartbroken since. What pieces of turd are these family members and friends? Wasn't enough they ruined your life, they ganged up on you instead of being apologetic AF and de-escalating. Shaking my head. I know you can't go John Wick on them, but isn't there any legal framework for a defamation lawsuit you could start on behalf of your wife against all of them? I've decided I wasn't going to let these people steal one more second of my time. I don't think there's much I can do legally, and even if there is a legal framework for it, I wouldn't even waste any time on it. That relationship is dead, dude, and you killed it. Sure, meet up and explain everything you learned and apologize for your wrongs, but besides closure, I don't think you should expect anything more. Seconding this, 
If I was laid off and my wife was working, I'd be appreciative AF to be honest, a 50s housewife with back hair. Only been laid off once luckily, but my unemployment ended up being a long weekend. They got into his head, it's done. He can maybe get closure and give her some, but I can't see it being rekindled. Now that I look back at things, I absolutely see how unappreciative I was of her kindness and her dedication to me. Even reading this has genuinely hurt me, because I really let these men, especially my father, play with my mind. I can't even come close to imagining how much I hurt her with my distrust. Now for the update. On Sunday, I got to meet up with my ex-wife. I apologized profusely and she was kind and understanding, but said she couldn't and wouldn't forgive me. She said that it simply isn't in her nature to forgive and that despite it all, she holds no grudges or anger against me and wishes me nothing but goodness in my life. She did give me some advice and told me that I have been in an abusive relationship all my life and that in order to heal whatever is broken in me, that I should cut out my father as he sets the tone for my treatment by the rest of my family. She had pointed out the many ways my father has hurt me or had encouraged my family to mistreat me. She said I'd always be stagnated and unhappy if I continued to associate myself with my family and former friends. I told her that I cut them out of my life and that I've got my first therapy session scheduled in a few days. She said she was proud of me for taking my first step into healing. Our conversation was heartfelt and emotionally devastating as we discussed the many ways our marriage had failed as well as the abuse I've experienced by my father and family. We cried the entire time. We cried a lot. We ended our conversation with a long hug and then we said our goodbyes. If any of your brothers slash friends are married or have girlfriends, tell them exactly what they did. All of them work together to manipulate you, then all try to sleep with your ex. They are monstrously manipulative and evil. And quite besides revenge, these women need to know their partners are abusive and manipulating them deliberately and cheating, if they were in a relationship during this time. This. I would send a group text to all the wives slash girlfriends, send them screenshots of their messages as well as this Reddit post. You're not seeking revenge, just paying it forward. I've heard of toxic families, but man, what your family did to you is unreal. And led by your dad? Damn, what kind of parent does that to their child? I hope you move on and pass their BS. So sorry they did those things to you. I'm so sorry you're going through this. Too bad she can't forgive, because that's an important step in emotional maturity. I wish you healing and happiness. Forgiveness is earned through changed behavior and recognition for your harm, but it isn't guaranteed or something you deserve. Some things shouldn't be forgiven, but that doesn't mean it eats away at a person or that it somehow holds them back. So I do agree with her when she said that you don't need to forgive in order to heal or gain emotional maturity. And sometimes forgiveness is not even an option. For her, this is one of those things that she simply can't and won't forgive. And all she can do is accept it. As much as I'd like her forgiveness, it is simply not available to me and that's perfectly fine. Now leave her alone and continue to work on yourself. Next story. I told my mom to do us all a favor and finally overdose. My mom, if you'd like to call her that, was absent for the first 11 years of my life due to her addiction. She got clean a year later and then relapsed when I was 17. I always used to cry myself to sleep, wondering why pills are more important. All she had to do was choose us and say no. She would never do it. We were never good enough for her to stay clean. Why do I feel like I lost something that I never had? Fast forward to now. I'm 21. I have accepted that all I have is pictures of my mom and I'll never have a real one. But every time I picture her, all I feel is pain. In fact, all eight of us will never have a mother, bar the youngest who's adopted. The second and third youngest are in foster care. Even though they aren't my dad's, he is trying to adopt them to keep us all together. Anyway, it was my 21st not too long ago. My mother stumbled in. You could immediately tell she was on a calm down and rambling to anyone who would listen to how she raised us. She loved us, she cared about us, and how my father snatched that away from her. I walked right up to her and with a 20-year dialogue of pain, anger, and everything I wanted to say, scream at her. I'm in a room with a parent that I barely know. You'll say to anyone that you're proud of me, but you don't know me. You should have been there when I graduated, congratulating me and telling me you loved me, but you were strung out on drugs telling me you love me, but it isn't real. If you really cared for me, then where have you been? You've had over 25 years to get yourself together and be a mother. You should have been there for us. I don't get it. I am humiliated. We needed you. I needed you. 
We were too young to understand. I was nothing but a kid who couldn't understand. All I feel is pain when I look at you and think about you. Just do us a favor and end our suffering. And finally overdose. And let's just say after I screamed that in her face, I felt relieved. I finally felt a bit of happiness mixed with sorrow, but it was calming. I guess I'm grieving for the mother I never had in a sense. Her side of the family are refusing to speak to me or any of my siblings, as they call it punishment until I apologize. My siblings were proud of me and said they'd do what I did in a heartbeat. My dad said it wasn't the best place or time, but is proud of me for expressing how I feel. I don't really know how I feel anymore. Like, I do feel guilty. Like, maybe I shouldn't have said it. I don't really know, other than I'm hurting. Now for the top comments. I'm not sure if you guys, you and your sibs are in therapy or not, but if you want a free slash low commitment option, you can join Alcoholic Anonymous. It's a support group for family of addicts. And they also have Teen L. Annan. I forgot the group name, but they also have one called something like Adult Children of Addicts for those who grew up in that situation and how it impacts their adulthood. All of these groups have local and online meetings. We've been in therapy for as long as I can remember. I think I started therapy when I was roughly two or three, and it was play therapy or something along those lines, due to her trying to end us among a whole load of abuse when it was her weekend to take care of us. Was it the best place? Maybe not. But if no lies were told, you have nothing to apologize for. Her family can enable her delusions and her lifestyle if they want, but there is nothing to apologize for. Exactly. Why the enabling? It's insanity. I don't think it's enabling. As such, I think it's more optics. Opie saying what she said means that the extended family had a camera turned on their own actions, etc. And that's what got them angry. I know optics and enabling do sometimes go hand in hand. Poor Opie. Last story. My dad's partner keeps trying to psychologically harm me, but I can't help laughing at her futile attempts. I'll start this by giving some background info. My 18 male parents, 53 male, 46 female, divorced when I was 6 on good terms. They got shared custody of me, and I'd spend half a week at my mom's and half a week at my dad's. Around a year after the divorce, my dad got together with his current partner, who we'll call Amy, 42 female. She has two children, 14 female and 12 male, from her previous marriage. I'm pretty close with them, and we get along well. Unfortunately, me and Amy never really got close, but we also never fought. That was until around half a year ago where, out of nowhere, she did a complete 180. She started giving me the passive-aggressive treatment and made remarks about every single thing I did. Back then, I had no idea what was her reason, but I recently found out. And let me tell you, she's petty AF. My dad's dream ever since he started working was being able to retire early. After working at the same bank for over 25 years and saving a big portion of every paycheck, he managed to retire last year. I'm really proud of him because he decided to use his free time to work on himself. He started to eat a lot healthier and has been working out daily. This led him to losing over 40 pounds. As it turns out, Amy's not as enthusiastic about it as I am. She's really envious. I'm not entirely sure as to why, but I'm guessing it has something to do with her poor financial decisions in the past. Unfortunately for me, she's the type of person that bows down to the strong but bullies the weak. She knows that my dad won't take her nonsense, so she decided that I'm the next best target. My dad's place has three bedrooms, which means her kids have to share the biggest one. Since I'll be going to college in a couple of months, I told my dad that I'll give my bedroom to one of them. My sister got really happy because she's about to start high school and she desperately needs some privacy. Because of it, Amy came to the conclusion that since I'll be gone in a couple of months, she can start treating me like crap. Here are a couple of examples which came to mind because of how stupid they were. She would scream at me if I failed more than one-fourth of the bathtub, which, mind you, is not even a big bathtub, as I barely fit inside as a 6 feet 4 inches guy. I chalked it up to her being an environmental freak all of a sudden. She wants me to do my dishes, which is understandable and I have no problem doing. What I have a problem with is her not letting me use more than one set of dishes. She doesn't allow me to touch any other dishes besides that one, and doesn't even allow her own children to touch mine, as if I had a bubonic plague or something. Last week, I bought microwavable popcorn and started making it. When she heard a popping sound, she appeared in the kitchen out of nowhere and started grabbing every bowl so I would have to eat out of the bag. She hid the bowls under her blanket, like some toddler. I audibly chuckled because of how ridiculous this was. 
and she immediately started shouting something along the lines of, How dare you laugh at me? I have a long blonde hair, which is the same length slash color as her daughter's. Once, she stormed into my room and started demanding I clean the bathroom sink because, and I quote, Your disgusting hair is all over the sink. Clean it now. The problem is, I just came back from school and haven't been to the toilet that day. I told her that the hair was not mine, and that it's probably her daughter's, to which she said that is not possible because only your hair looks so repelling. Now mind you, this only happens when my dad's not around. She once tried this nonsense when he was around, and he immediately shut it down. He's been nothing but understanding and has talked to her numerous times, but she always resumes her usual behavior after things settle down. I don't know if any of you found yourself in a similar situation, but I'd appreciate any advice on how to deal with it. Like I said, I'm moving away for college, but I want to be able to visit my dad without having to participate in emotional warfare. Edit 1. I've seen some people asking why my dad married her. The answer is he didn't. As much as they might have had feelings for each other at some point, their relationship currently is basically strictly practical. She needs someone to help her with the kids and a place to live, while he needs someone to be around. The entirety of my dad's family is either dead or live so far away that they see each other every couple of years. As for friends, my dad used to be a workaholic, so he only has like two close friends who he sees semi-frequently. Laugh at her. Simple and effective. At every petty comment, laugh at her. She wants a reaction? Give her the one that will screw her more. Don't engage in smile and laugh. Don't give a rise her argument. That's what I've been doing for some time now, but it only seems to make the comments more frequent. I can't wait till I get away from her. They're more frequent because she's not getting to you. Maybe record one of her tantrums and send it to your dad, and then every time she tries again, get her cell phone out. Another commenter also suggested recording this stuff. Might actually look into doing it. We'll see. Damn it, man. I know what it is like to have such a horrible step-parent, unfortunately. My best advice would be to cover your back by having your phone recording as many interactions with her as possible. I'm not a fan of hidden cameras, but when someone is mistreating you, it is the best way to prove what is going on. Keep your phone in your pocket so that it isn't so obvious. Who knows, though? Maybe being obvious and recording her actions when she starts up is exactly the wake-up call she needs. She will be upset, but so what? She will just have to get over it. Not a bad idea, though I feel like it won't change much.